Here in phase four, position number eight, we're going to kind of reference this from the standpoint that you've got to grade the player in this particular position. Plus, we want to give you some teaching points that may be a benefit to you in real time and as you do video analysis. And the first thing we're looking for from a grading standpoint is the head position. And we're going to track that helmet angle of the bill of that cap, as you can see. If I've got that bill of that cap angle slightly down and the head is back behind the leg, as our body's back, then you're going to give this a positive grade. But if you've got the head position where the bill is parallel, or you can see a good part of his face, and or he's out in front, then you're going to give it a negative score. So you're looking to get as close to this particular example as possible to give it a positive grade. The further off from that, then don't hesitate to give it the negative grade. Get to work on helping to keep the player in on contact with the head, yet still sustaining a quiet head through the process. Now, here's a teaching point for you, whether you're teaching from a real-time uh, scenario at the field or in the cage, or you're doing a video. And what I try to do is I try uh, to get off 10 to 15 feet, wherever I'm at, whether I'm doing video or, or doing the instruction. And many times if I'm trying to determine if the hitter's moving forward, if uh, you know if he's losing himself, a good way to do that is to draw upon something in the distance that you can actually use as an anchor point from phase one all the way through. So in other words, in this case, let's pretend the yellow line that I've inset in this uh, video clip uh, right above his head could be a light post stadium light post in the distance. It could be a batting cage post, um, a telephone post, could be a fence post. It's something that I can use that uh, if I get the right angle that I can actually kind of keep my player or my student here uh, aligned with as I'm looking at him visually. Now, if in the process of that starting phase one all the way through the fifth phase that we're going to get into in a minute, the final phase of completing a swing, phase one through five. If at any point that my player has moved forward completely of that anchor point where I can actually see uh, space between the back of his helmet and that anchor point, I know i got a problem child. <laughs> okay, and so do you if you can identify that. So utilize the surrounding uh, environment to help you identify it in real time. And in video, you can actually use the uh, analysis um, software to put a line above your player and judge whether or not he's moving forward in the process. And that means that we've gone forward and we violated um, you know, pretty much what we're trying to do in uh, loading up and staying back in phase two, coming into phase three, still staying loaded, and then obviously releasing uh, the torque of the swing from phase three into phase four and through phase five. We want to stay back behind that front side leg. And again, so for grading purposes, we want the head behind that, that front thigh, as you see it there. We want the bill of that cap angled slightly down on contact, which is going to really be uh, symptomatic of, of a quiet head and then from a coaching standpoint or training standpoint you can use an apparatus or some kind of object to help you monitor your player both in real time and in video to determine the movement and how much they're actually losing going forward in the uh, transfer of the power uh, from the uh, phase three into phase four. So I hope that's a help. Now let's go on to the completion of the swing starting with phase five.